What's going on, everybody? Sorry for the uh, the little hiatus the last 10 days or so. Uh, just been trying to finish up a project that I have with my uh, business, and it's just been taking up pretty much every hour um, of the day that I had available. But now we've kind of got it to a point where it's mostly done. So uh, I have a little more time to make these videos. Uh, so for this one, what I wanted to do is the third video in the uh, Forbidden Technology series, uh, where I try and just dive into some uh, I guess effects and maybe just um, sort of like sliders in Lumion that people don't really use, whether that's because they just don't know what it does or they just don't know it exists. Uh, this one is going to be for the specular slider. And I'll be honest, this is one that I didn't even really know existed. Uh, I always just use the gloss slider um, on the sort of like the main page of the material um, interface. Uh, just to adjust uh, sort of how it interacted with light, but I was wrong in doing that. Uh, the specular uh, can really um, bump up the realism in your metals, and I probably should have mentioned this in my metal series for anyone that uh, watched the whole thing, uh, but quite honestly, I actually didn't even know about this um, because I had tried to use it before on a couple of materials, um, but I don't think I, when I did it, I didn't realize that they had to be metallic or at least very glossy. Um, so I think I was just trying to get it to work and I couldn't so I just was like, okay Well, it must not do anything that important, um, but I'm gonna show you uh, What it does so uh, I'm just gonna be using the Villa Cabrera example in this one um, Just because it's it's easily um, it's available to everyone so you can uh, easily recreate the tutorial uh, I'm gonna be putting all the models uh, in my uh, Google Drive folder uh, so the link will be below the video on that and also uh, I'm gonna put some pictures in there that I just rendered out uh, when I was doing sort of a test of this. So the pictures may look a little bit different than uh, what we end up with in the tutorial, but you should just be able to kind of see um, how the materials look without any specular maps on them with a bit of the specular slider and then cranked up all the way. And then that way you can kind of just flip through them at whatever rate you want and you can uh, you know, sort of see what it does uh, for yourself. But now we can, uh, we can hop right into it. So I have um, this model that I got off of uh, CG Trader. Uh, it was free. So it's just like a little Buddha statue. And I'll just drop this on the table when it loads in here. Comes in really small for some reason. I don't know what the units are set to, but uh, I thought it was a pretty good model. So just drag this up like here. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna put a gold ma uh, material on it. So, here we go, gold. Okay, now, so as I went through my, um, that metal series I had mentioned, I like to turn the gloss down just a little bit because I find it kind of smooths out the reflections a little bit and just, it, it just looks more realistic to me. Um, you know, when it's all the way up here, it doesn't, it just almost doesn't look realistic. Um, so, yeah, I just take it from 1 down to 0.9. Now, let's just set up a little quick camera angle for this. Uh, I'll do like daytime, I guess. And let's turn this around here. Okay, so I think that should be good. Okay, so if we just render this out quickly, uh, I'll just throw these on my desktop. So we render this out quickly. You know, it doesn't look too bad, it looks okay. It, uh, you know, obviously you can tell that it's like a, it's, it just looks like it's a metallic yellow, basically. Um, so what we can do now is come in here and then you're going to go to the settings here. So this is obviously where you get your emissive, your saturation, um, the saturation, I don't really touch. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there's really enough here <laughs> to make a video on. It's just like, uh, just change the saturation of your material. So, you know, maybe there'd be like some cool effects that you can make with it, but another video. <laughs> Um, let's turn the specular up to like 0.1 and what you can kind of see is that um, the best way I would kind of describe it is that if we look at this little line right here of these like lights uh, so that's just the reflection from the Sun I think this is here but you can just see like right along here these lines one down here one down here as I turn it up those um, become bigger so it's basically like it's increasing how much light is reflected and you're going to be able to see it better when I bring the car in. But, you know, as it goes up, you can see that the areas that are having uh, that sort of that white sun reflection, they're going up and up and up. So you can make it so like I think, you know, at one, it's a little too specular. Like, I, I don't think that that is really 
uh, realistic. I guess it would kind of depend on the model that you were using. Um, the best results I had were about like one and a half, like two, like somewhere in like this range. Um, Cause as you can see, like it really can add to that golden effect. So let's try rendering that one out now. And then we can compare the two. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I thought this was really cool. As I said, I should have mentioned this, I guess, in uh, when I was doing the metal tutorial, I just honestly didn't know um, that it was even a thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and you know what, just for good measure, let's render out that last, I'll just go all the way up here for this one. And then um, the next model that I had mentioned, we have uh, just a car that I got off of the uh, 3D warehouse. So uh, as I said, I'll be making those available just so that uh, everyone can follow along with it. Um, now, you know, you could really use anything you want for this. The only reason I use the car is because uh, I just find that the car paint is a really good example of kind of like how it can, it can come out because not only is it pretty reflective, but it's also a, a relatively flat surface compared to something like this. Uh, so I think I actually have this one imported already. Yeah, so... You can put whatever materials you want on this. Uh, I'll show you what I did for the material of the car. And th there might be a far better way of making car paint in Lumion. I don't ever do that. Uh, if I'm using Lumion with cars, I just use one of the ones that are provided. Um, but I know that there are some people that do some like really, uh, like I guess like high level renders of cars in Lumion. So they would be, um, I guess a lot better to try and talk to on the forums. Um, but this is just what I did. So I just brought in a standard um, material, you know, just gave it like the coloration, I think. That might have already been standard, honestly. Um, the, yeah, I just turned the gloss down to 0.9, reflectivity up slightly. So it doesn't really do too, too much, but just kind of adds a little bit more to it. And then I turned the specular up to 0.3 in this example. Um, but I'm going to turn it down for now. So you can see it here a lot better. So if we're going on like this side of the car, yeah, so right here. So you almost get like a perfect reflection of the sun. And let's drop a, let's drop a reflection cube in quickly just to, oh, no. Good enough. Um, just to kind of get a little bit more realistic, I guess, with the reflection. But yeah, so here we have the, like that's clearly the sun. And as we, like as we crank up the um, specular reflection, then you can see that that it's sort of like the sphere of influence, I guess. I'm not really sure what you'd want to call that, but just like the area that it's actually looking emissive. It almost makes it look like the sun is like far bigger, like, and it almost gives you like a, I guess like a cloudier, um, I guess like a reflection on that. It um, this is almost like a mirror where it's you're looking at the car paint and then directly up at the sun, and I feel like for most cars you wouldn't actually get that. You'd get more of this like you know, this, this big glob, since it's not like a perfect mirror. Um, so that's kind of a good example of that. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drop in just a spotlight. Uh, I haven't tested this with area lights and Omni lights. I'm assuming that doesn't work. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we don't really need to get into that. Yeah. So if we let, if we drop this like right here, as you can see, that's our, uh, that's our light source there. We'll turn it back down just play around with this a bit. So yeah, you can perfectly see that light source. And if we go over here, we can see both the sun and the light source, which they look basically the same at this because it's just a, like a sphere in the sky. So as you can see, that goes up, you get more of the uh, highlights there. And this can be really good for something that like is maybe like, you know, product design. Um, I saw a post on the forums actually by Babe, I think it was. And they used it for jewelry. And that was actually what made me want to make this video because um, it, it almost had a look to it that I've never seen in Lumion. Now, I don't know if they did any editing to it. I don't think that they did. It would have just been uh, all done in Lumion. And that was uh, that was really impressive. So I think that this is something that can really help um, take uh, any metallic uh, material or just any like moderately uh, glossy material to the next level with this. And uh, it can really make uh, your images pop. So let me know if this helped you out a lot. Um, to anyone who subscribed to the channel, I really appreciate the support. And this is if this is the first time that you've stopped by any of my videos, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've got some really interesting videos coming this week, I think. 
Um, and it, it mostly focuses on uh, SketchUp to Blender workflow. Um, since I have, a, I found out a lot of really cool tricks uh, to use in Lumion, but it, it's very difficult to do from SketchUp to Lumion, but it's pretty easy to do from SketchUp to Blender. So I hope that people will stick around for those videos. Uh, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Uh, have a great night, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.